they're reflecting the here and now, composing. There's this word composing, is bringing your attention to to the reality of this moment is here and now. So that the past is a memory of what if you're thinking of something that happened before. Future, right now, tomorrow is unknown. So the now is the knowing, it's reminding yourself that now is, that's all there ever is. <clears throat> there isn't any future or past, it's just memory and the future is uh, speculation, hope, expectation, dread, worry, anxiety, and, and, and we always, in the present, as we, we compose, we reflect on the way it is. So if we don't, remind ourselves, we don't recognize or realize Dhamma in the, as here and now, then we, we live our lives always in that deluded uh, assumptions about time is reality and the past is my past as somehow having more reality, more truth to it than and what it really has, because at this moment, your past, what is it? What is the past in terms of me and mine? It's a memory. I remember walking in the Hammer Woods with Bhante Gunaratana yesterday. But what is that now? That's a, that's a memory, isn't it? So, even though this is so obvious, we can live our lives in, in live thinking of the past, sentimental, remembering things of the past, or guilt, feeling guilty about things we remember that weren't very good in the past, resentful, about being treated unfairly, misunderstood, not loved, not nurtured, not appreciated, not accepted for your true self in the past, blaming mom and dad and everything, everyone else like people tend to do. The future is <clears throat> You know, it's, uh, what is future in the, in the reality of this moment is maybe, could be, might be. I hope everything will go well. <clears throat> but I fear, you know, I kind of dread or anticipate problems in the future. You know, there could be all kinds of problems arising in the future. The nuns choir the hammer cottage. There could be all kinds of difficulties, problems, or it might just. I hope everything goes well. Hammer cottage, uh, every goes through easily, paid for, no problem. Uh, the nuns feel more uh, strengthened. The uh, community is is more confident because it has more space, more accommodation. Hope. Hope it's like that. But it might, could be, the other way. So this is, this putting into perspective what, what future is in terms of now.
But all the maybes, could bes, might bes, hopes and dreads and fears and things like that, they're, they're your cause from memories of the past, isn't it? I remember before, I remember this happened and she said this and he did that and this happened. I remember, th who knows what they might do in the future. You know, so so the, the maybes, could bes, might bes, hopes and fears are conditioning of the mind, you know, that we, uh, we speculate about these kind of things happening again or similar situations could happen in the future. But when we take refuge in Dhamma, Santitiko, Akaliko, Ehipatko, Upanaiko, Bhajatang, Vaitidapo, we knew he, this, we're not living that way anymore. This is not, we're not here to to perpetuate that illusion in the community or in ourselves, in our lives as, as uh, summoners, but to reflect. We have the, the purpose, the whole point that is to realize Dhamma. And of course that's here and now. No, you're never going to realize Dhamma in the future, I'll tell you. <clears throat> you think you might, or it could be, and you might never realize Dhamma in the future. <clears throat> Maybe you don't have enough Varamita to realize Dhamma in the future. Uh, maybe uh, all these kind of problems, you know, could be, might be. But Santitiko Akalika Dhamma is like this, it's a recognition, awakening. This is the whole self-illusion is based on memory, isn't it? The personality, the Sakya Ditti, it's all about memory. The world that we create is all about time, isn't it? Past, present, future. Time is reality. Personality, Sakyaditi, as our soul, our true self. And these are these are the assumptions of the ignorant world, of Icha, Bajaya Sankara. So what I'm doing now is kind of, you know, reflecting on the way it is. I'm not saying right or wrong about that, you know, about the time or that we've got to eradicate time and self. But put it in the perspective of Dhamma. What is it right now? This, because this is where we're at. We're here place is here, the time is now. So this is true wherever you are, you know, whether you're Chithurst or London, the place is always here, the time is always now. Memory is impermanent. Uh, it's, it's even though I've reflected this way many times, and but over years of, you know, of keep keep gnawing away at it till it really, you know, it's no longer just you know something you do in morning meditation or special situations. But you really see it. You know this. This is a. Uh, 
jnana, it's, it's knowledge, it's profound knowledge, it's not just, you know, uh, interesting ideas or Buddhist theories. So in terms of like, like uh, self-view, Sakya Ditti, you know, you keep breaking down that reality by not, not by uh, trying to, you know, get rid of it, but just to see that, that the sense of me and mine is, it doesn't have any real essence. It's like a soap bubble. It has no substance. What is a memory in the present? And so you, a memory has, you know, it's, it's, uh, has nothing to it. It's, it's kind of, you can't get hold of it. You know, it comes and goes, memories come and go and they have their use, but in terms of identifying with memory, <clears throat> you know, then we create this, the avicca, this ignorance of just not knowing who we are or what uh, we believe in all the illusions we create, the conditioning of the mind, our cultural conditioning, our memories, as, as uh, you know, so it, gives, it takes on a significance that when you really examine it, it doesn't have. It's a, it is what it is in the present. <clears throat> that is <clears throat> an honest statement, isn't it? You're not, not t trying to deny it, but recognize uh, these five khandhas in terms of their reality in the present. Now, when the memories cease, you know, and you really look at them, not suppress memory. Suppression of memories is always a, another form of ignorance. So it, it's not suppressing, but recognizing, seeing the presence and absence when there's memory and when there isn't. This is discerning. Panya. At this moment, there's no memory. I haven't lost my memory, but there's, not a, there's no attachment to a memory. So like this. No self is like this. And I'm actually, you know, recognizing this at this moment. No tomato. And yet the body's sitting here, conscious, aware. So awareness, consciousness, here and now. It's like this. It's a, I can't, there's no tomato in it. Not a memory. In order for tomato to arise, I have to remember, I am Ajahn Tomato. 
So and it's exploring, investigating, looking into the, the way it is. The third uh, fetter is uh, wichikicca, uh, or translated as doubt. <clears throat> and doubt is always from thinking. Am I right or wrong, or is this, is this true, or false and uh, what should I do? How should I practice? Um, all this, uh, you know, you have to doubt, you have to think. So this is where, you know, exploring the thinking process, what I encourage is, is getting to know the limitation of thought and the, and the function of thought, thinking itself. So that you, you, you're not trying to stop thinking, or you know have, you know have form a form another thought that you shouldn't think, because then you'll, it will always lead to wichikicca. It's it's to to recognize non-thinking, emptiness. And that's why <clears throat> those, those suggestions about intentional thinking, you know, I am Ajahn Sumedho, kind of intentionally thinking and observe, to observe. Uh, to notice the spaces, the gaps between the words. Because those are never noticed, are we? we when we're caught in the thinking process, we don't, we aren't paying attention to the gaps. We're we're getting caught in the linear procession of of uh, the thinking process. Just thinking of the just observing the, that one thought connects to another. You know, so that's the way. That's the limitation of thinking. It you can't have two thoughts in the same moment. So you have you know one and then the next. And you have to A and then B and then C and then D. The only way A, B, C and D can be contained in one moment is through awareness, which is non-thinking, isn't dependent on thinking. So it's what we call intuition, intuitive awareness. This is the uh, the, and there's the mindfulness, um, ability, the, it's a natural ability, it's naturally intelligent, it's not personally uh, mine, or uh, it's not a self, it's not my possession. Language is, um, you know, memory. Uh, it's something you learn after you're born. You know, so it's a, it's a conditioned uh, habit, language. <clears throat> so, and, and it's not to be despised, but <clears throat> 
you know, it's not an attack on thinking or language, but recognizing its limitation. Because if we don't, then, you know, you see, we know ourselves and so many people around that, that live, that experience life through thinking about it. Always analyzing, comparing, and, and uh, you know, forming views and opinions and, and ideals about how things should be, and then very critical about because things aren't what they should be. So the, the, the world is, it's all about criticism and comparing and, and uh, you know, wanting things to be a certain way, not liking the way it is, fearing, dreading, worrying about the future, Remembering the past, getting sentimental about the good old days, or regrets, all kinds of regrets about things in the past, resentments, fears about the future. What will happen to me? Because in the past I, I did this dreadful act. What will be my resultant karma in the future? And this is it's, it's a, this is fraught with a self-view, isn't it? It's, I did this in the past, and I've got to pay it off in some way in the future. What, what is this? This is thinking, isn't it? And the sense of me and mine. What I remember of the past, you know, I did this. I said this in the past. I acted like that, you know, and in the past that I remember it. The, and it wasn't good. I shouldn't have acted like that. And uh, what will be the karmic result in the future? We get asked that all the time. You, you don't tend to do that so much, but lay people tend easily. Uh, what is the? What about the future life and things like that? Now this is all thinking, isn't it? To be a person, you have to think, you have memory, language, all this is, uh, is and the attachment to this, the belief in it, the identity with all of it. So then this is why we suffer, because we're, 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 we're attached to uh, delusion. So then the waking up in the, the buto, pay attention, examine, look into, these are the, these are the invitation of the, of the Buddha. Come and see, Bhante Gunaratna, like, I've, like that, ehi pasiko, uh, Reflection, because we translate it as encouraging investigation, which doesn't have the impact, does it? A hipasiko, encouraging investigation. It sounds. It doesn't have the urgency or the immediacy, and the come and see. A he is, a, you know, the come. It's not. A, well, we, we try to encourage investigation into the Dhamma Chitters. And if you come here, we'll teach you to practice and encourage you to investigate. Where Ahi Pazi goes, come and look right now, wake up, you know. So it has, it has a kind of, uh, you know, immediate. Here and now, Dhamma, rather than encouraging investigation, doesn't have that same quality of here and now.
Now, in terms of practice, you know, meditation practice, you know, what you think of meditation is is still memory, isn't it? You know, your your views and opinions and doubts about meditation. Uh, you know, about your own practice or uh, about the way I teach or about another teacher or that. What is it right now? What should I do? Should I practice metta first and then and then uh, jhanas and then vipassana? Or can you do vipassana without the jhanas? You ha- do you have to get the jhanas or just totally ignore the jhanas? Or that's all you need to do is get the jhanas. Forget the vipassana. <laughs> I don't know how fed up I am with all that. You get it all the time. And so, but so point to the, you know, this is thinking, isn't it? This is ahi pasiko, come and see. You know, the the jhanas is a word, it's a thought. Should I get the jhanas first? Or should you do you need them? And I mean, whatever it is, you know, see what it is in the present. This is attachment to concepts, ideas that you get from books or others, views and opinions. It is. It is what it is. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, good or bad. But you know, the sense of immediacy, come and see. This is. Should I or shouldn't I? Do you need this or don't you? Am I right or wrong? Is he right or wrong? And this is then. This. What is this in terms of here and now? This is thinking. Doubting uncertainty. And what are you asking for? An answer. You want you want an answer to the question or a solution to the problem. So in in terms of investigating, you know, here and now, this is the way it is, isn't it? This is this this, should I get jhanas first, or do you need them or not, or how do you do it? It's like this is this is thinking, taking to, to doubt. Or last last year when I was in the forest, I I think I got first jhana. And this is you know the sense of I really got somewhere last year. I remember having some, could be first jhana, wow. You know, this is a real something, real attainment. I, you know, I've had, I've had first jhana experience. And so the ego, the sense of the sakya ditti, uh, the whole thing comes into, into your consciousness and you, you bite it, you grab it, you identify. But if you trust yourself, in awareness, you know, a memory of first jhana last year. Is what is it now? It's a memory. This is this is this is investigating. You know, seeing the, this is direct. This is satipatthana. So it's uh, you know it's 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 it's, uh, it's not speculative. It's not encouraging. Uh, a self view at all is it that i i i th- i think i i had first john last year when i was in the hammer wood <laughs> i mean that's another self view isn't it that's a a memory of me practicing and having and remembering some kind of experience i had last year it's not a denial of that but it's putting memory into it's proper perspective and, and Nietzsche dukkanata rather than uh, you know encouraging the sense of I you know I had this 
last year, which is Sakya Dite. So in terms of reflecting, you keep they gnawing away, keep doing it, you know, until eventually it all breaks down. You know, it falls upon the world that you create, the the self that you you're you're committed to. It's, it loses its its reality. It, it becomes you know, it just falls apart. The world ceases, the self disappears, doubt vanishes. So then, you, then that is uh, the first three fetters, which allow a, a vision of the path. Because the things that are blocking the, the path, the vision, knowing the path, is, is just that, these three uh, artifices that we create. Don't blame it on anybody else. So then uh, the sotapanna or stream entry, you see, not, it's not a personal attainment, is it? It's immediately you put it into I've attained stream entry, it's back into Sakya Ditti. Sila Bhattabharamasa. So what, what you've actually uh, recognized is, is non-self. So there's no attainment in it. You know, attainment is all about me and mine. What I've done in the past and my achievements and my attainments, my successes and my failures, is a, you know, based on that illusion of Sakyaditi as my reality, Silabhattabharamasa as the truth, as the real world, and Vichikicha, the thinking process is, you know, I only experience, the only experience I trust is by, through an analyzing it and judging it, uh, naming it, conceiving it in some way, and then it's real, like a Western scientist, you know, you have to prove it, you have to see it, see it in, in, you know, in, in a, as an object through my eyes and so forth, you know, then, I'm, then I, can, I can't believe in God because you can't see God. But if you can produce something that's God that I can see, then I'll believe you. <laughs> now this is all thinking, speculation, self. And this, these are the the obstructions, the fetters that bind us to to the world of suffering. <clears throat> so in, in taking these three fetters, you know, because the, these first three fetters, and and really investigating that in terms of always here and now, Pachubana Dhamma. And this is what I, you know, I've been doing in these morning reflections. So that in a way of investigating, you know, is is the uh, Ajahn Sumato, or is this a thought, a memory? The word Ajahn Sumato. Is there? Can I find anything in this moment that is? uniquely me and mine. Because to, to experience the world as mine, I have to grasp uh, the illusion of that, that, that my personality is my reality. 
that I'm really my personality. I'm really this person. This is my reality. I experience life through my, my personality. You know, praise me and I'm happy. Make me feel good. Say you love me. Make me feel secure. Because personally, I, 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 you know, I need your confirmation that I'm all right. Smile at me. Say, Ajahn Sumedho, you're wonderful. And then I feel, I'm, and say, say, you're a very good teacher. And then I feel confident. And then, then if you say, ah, you're, you're totally deluded megalomaniac as far as I can see. Can't stand the sight of you. You've hurt my feelings. I'm terribly hurt, shattered, because, you know, I've tried to help you as best I can. You know, I'd rather be in a cave, actually, right now, sitting here. And, and I do expect you to thank me for my sacrifices. And, uh, but instead, all I get is, is your enmity. It's not fair. I'm hurt. This is Sakya Diti, isn't it? When people criticize me, you know that people give me feedback, as they say, or share with me their feelings, negative feelings about me as a person. You know, this is something I've, I've deliberately, uh, because I could see this was a weakness in me, that, uh, that you know, just a, a blind spot. I, uh, I was, uh, couldn't, I didn't know how to deal with criticism. Praise, I was, didn't I always like praise? Because <laughs> personally, praise makes me feel good and that I'm worthwhile. And I'm, I'm, wasting, I'm not wasting my time. And, and I'm likable, lovable, respected. And then criticism makes me feel personally kind of despairing and feeling uh, inadequate and uh, so forth, so that this is the personality. Personality, uh, you know, it, it loves praise and, and fears blame. So this is, uh, but this is a, this awareness of this personality. So I'd ask myself, do I want to, am I going to spend my monastic life deluding myself? by trying to just get affirmations for me as a person? Do I need to get kind of, you know, titles and, and, and be, you know, become famous and, and uh, you know, just to prove that I am somebody. I'm, I have, you know, I'm a, let's say he's a very good monk. Uh, he's very, uh, you know, strict with the rules, he's uh, impeccable, he's, uh, you know, very moral, good teacher. Because if I depend on this, on praise, then, then I really fear blame, even when I'm not getting it. And somebody's going to come up and say, you know, you're a phony. You're not real. Get real tomato. The people have said, monks have said this to me. Get real tomato. You're not facing reality. So, you know, so you, then you want to run off to the cave. That's my reaction. When, when criticism and difficulties and things come my way, personally, I want to run away from them. That's, that's how my personality reacts. I want to avoid scenes, difficult situations, 
confrontations by running away to my cave. So then in, in reflecting on this, you know, I can see how, you know, how cowardly it is. You know, how, how, how difficult life can be even in, in the very pleasant situations I find myself in. How problematic life becomes for me as a person if that's my refuge, if Sakyadit is my refuge. There's no way I could, you know, I'd, I could have, you know, survived all these years on just the Sakyaditi level. Unless I went off by myself in a kind of controlled environment where, you know, I, I, I didn't, you know, any kind of unpleasantness or, or difficulty or criticism was, you know, re resisted in any way. Don't tell me, I don't want to know. You're a troublemaker. Get out of my life. So, this is, uh, then seeing this weakness, I was like, what is it, how is it, why is this fear of criticism? What is that, where does that come from? And I can see how, how wobbly the personal Sakyaditi is, as, you know, what an unstable, uh, wishy-washy uh, experience life is on a personal level. So then the investigating Sakyaditi you know, see what self really is, me and mine. I am Ajahn Samido and my practice, my life, my view. And then, uh, then reflect on this which is aware of that. To, to have this sense of me and mine, I, I have to think. I have to really believe in the Sakya Ditti as my reality, as it's really me. These memories, these emotional reactions, that's really me, my problems. And when, but when I really look at them, not through analysis, because analysis, then you're back in the thinking mind again. This is, this is immature, this is that's wrong, you, you shouldn't be like that, you shouldn't feel this way, you should uh, be more like this, you should be more confident, uh, you shouldn't be so, uh, you know, don't be so frightened of others. What is it in your past that made you so timid and shy and frightened of others? Is it because uh, your mother, my mother dropped me on my head and, and, and I've never quite recovered. <laughs> or because maybe I was born in the, the depression of the 1930s and it's had a traumatic effect on my childhood. And it, what it, all this is just more Sakyaditi, isn't it? Speculating, analyzing my personality. And you don't need to know why your personality is the way it is, but it, you know that, that, because that goes on, it goes on endlessly. But if you trust your awareness, in, this awareness is not personality. So this, is, when I reflect on this, I, this which is really aware in a way, like this. And then I'm in this present moment, sound of silence here and now, I'm completely embracing this moment, it includes, it's not divided into what should or shouldn't be right or wrong. It's, it's completely alert, intelligent, attentive, awakened, awakenness, consciousness, 
now. And just by recognizing this, I'm recognizing it now. I'm not creating it. It's not, I'm not going, you know, going into an absorbed state at all. It's I'm, I'm resting, I'm opening, listening, receiving this moment like this. apparent here and now. This is Dhamma, the Dhamma. Akalika and the timeless. Uchi Kecha is uh, not operating because I'm not thinking. I'm recognizing, realizing this natural state of being. And then the personality, Sakyaditi, uh, I have perspective on that. You know, it's very obvious. I'm not that. It is what it is, the self-view, the sense of me and mine still arises and it, it you know, it still operates, but it, it it's no longer my reality. Don't believe it. So, personally, I have preferences, likes and dislikes, and views and opinions, and things like this. Remembering things of the past, I can still feel resentment or annoyance or thinking of the future. You know, so recognizing that it is what it is. Is it right or wrong, or good or bad? Well, you know, if, if I grasp it and worry about it, and, and then, then, then I suffer from it. I create myself into somebody who, you know, doesn't want to do this, and dreads that, and, and forms views and opinions about whether it's necessary or whether it's a waste of time and so forth, but in terms of here and now Dhamma, it is the way it is. And then the, my refuge is in the awareness. <laughs> this awareness, that's not self. So it, it's, it's very clear for me, it's very precise. Self is, is uh, you know, is, is not some vague kind of abstraction. But I, you know, I, I've put it in that by investigating these first three fetters, then you, you know, you're, you're not kind of creating more kind of illusions about Dhamma, but you're breaking through the illusions you create around yourself about what you think is Dhamma and, and Whatever. So who knows what, you know, who, what is the knowing? This knowing is not personal. And people say, well, who knows? It's not a, the, the who is another thought, isn't it? Who, what. But there is knowing. Knowing is like this. So knowing this moment as is, is the body, here and now, the breath, sound of silence, the feeling, I'm knowing the kind of mood or uh, mental quality, the state of the jitta at this moment like this. This is direct knowing. It doesn't matter who knows it, it's just knowing. 
Because once you get caught in who again, then it's back into the wichikicca doubt. Oh, there's the ten fetters. There's ten fetters. So I mean, the, so these are. I found these very helpful. Uh, these, this, there's the four stages and ten fetters in terms of reflecting on dhamma and experience. You know, my investigating dhamma. Because it, the, these, this are teaching of four noble truths and. Uh, three aspects of each truth, twelve insights. These, uh, it's uh, it's so beautifully presented. You know the 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 first sermon, the Tamajaka Pawantana Sutta. It's a, so it's uh, you know it's a beautifully presented teaching. But as long as it remains just intellectual. Or theoretical, and it, it, you know, it's like grasping, grasping the teaching without, without actually doing what it says. You know, so I compare it to a prisoner in a prison cell. You know, you're locked in a stinking old prison cell. And you want out, and you wonder why you're so miserable, and why life is so suffocatingly barren and meaningless. And then the Buddha comes and says, here's the key to the door. Now, this, you know, you, put, you see that hole in the door, you put the key into that hole and turn it to the right, Turn the key to the right, and then turn the knob, and the door will open. You can get out. So then the prisoner says, "The Buddha's given me the key." And then you think this key is going to liberate me. So you you put it up. You know, you hang it on the wall and worship it every day. And the, uh, the Buddha has given me the key to liberation. And so every morning you get up and pray to the key and then wonder why, you know, I'm still, I don't feel liberated. I've been praying to that bloody key for 10 years now. And I'm getting arthritis in my knees. I'm still in the same stinking place I was before. So then you, you think, well, he did give instruction. You know, this hole in the door, what was that about? Yeah, there's a little hole there. And he said, he said something about putting the, oh, but the key's sacred. You can't, I've got to keep it up high. Put it in the hole in the door. It might be, you know, might be desecrating this sacred object, the seal of Bhattaparama. <laughs> <laughs> that he did say, you know, there's a bati bata, isn't it? You know, put the the thing. It's just a, you know, it is it's a key. Nothing sacred about it. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a tool to use. So you put it into the hole and turn to the right. Or did was it left? I think it was left. I think he said, turn it to the left. So you put the key into the hole, turn it to the left. He said, nothing's happened. <laughs> What's wrong? Nothing's happened. I turn it to the left, the door isn't open. Well, he, well, he turned the doorknob. Oh, 
I turn the doorknob and it still won't open. So then you're beginning to doubt the Buddha. You think uh, maybe it's not true. You know, just just uh, false. Then you start reflecting that it turned to the might it was right. And so then you eventually <clears throat> turn it to the right. The door opens. You get out. And then you know freedom is like this. You don't have to go back in again. So the, the this is uh, you know taking this the teaching, the the four noble truths, following the instructions, bhatibhata, and realizing the result. <clears throat> so that's the three aspects of each truth. You know the the uh, teaching itself, the uh, prescription what to do with it and and the result from doing that <clears throat> so that's reflecting isn't it that's the, that's the paradigm of reflection it's not analytical i think it's to be realized individually bhajatang waited up o he to realize this taste it yourself know this yourself through through insight. Now the here and now <coughs> is uh, you know bringing it back to ordinariness like this moment right now i i'm you know, re reflecting on the ordinariness of this well it's just it's it, there's nothing special to for something to become extraordinary i have to create myself again to experience extremities and 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 uh, you know delight in in extreme experience and peak moments and whatnot is I have to believe in myself uh, uh, and as a person but in the ordinariness of non-person emptiness non-attachment it's just this much So in your own uh, practice, just see how, how, much, how many of you meditate in order to have special experiences, anticipating some kind of, of uh, you know, if I keep doing this, then suddenly I'll, you know, I'll have some kind of breakthrough in which I will be, you know, the earth will tremble and all the lights will go blazing and I will be transformed formed into an enlightened arahant. But bringing it into the here and now, this is, it's ordinary. Sound of silence is, is ordinary. It's not Mozart. It's not the angelic chorus. Space here is like space. This this Dharma hall is special, you know. So you you got <clears throat> green oak, uh, nicely built Dharma hall. That's 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 an extreme, <clears throat> but. The space is ordinary, isn't it? Space is space. So that when you're observing visually, you know, space is doesn't have any, you know, it's 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 unnoticed usually. 
because it it doesn't it's not doesn't get you high and and inspire and doesn't isn't depressing so space is is like this it has space has no boundary does it it's not just the space in the dhamma hall because as you you know contemplate space here and now is that it the dhamma hall's in space the same with consciousness. You know, consciousness isn't special, it's like space. But you think consciousness is in your brain. When, when you explore consciousness, it, the brain is in consciousness. So I mean, it's, a, it's shifting out of the, the seeming appearance. Like, this, uh, this Dharma Hall has a lot of space right now, doesn't it? When it was packed with people the other day, it didn't seem so spacious because there were too there were a lot of people in here. And then compared to the shrine room in the house, you think, "Oh, this is really big. This is a big space." And the shrine room in the the old shrine room in the in the house is isn't very big. And then you compare the shrine room in the house with the shrine room at the nun's cottage. And that doesn't seem like, you know, that's a very small space compared to the shrine room in the house. The nun's shrine room compared to the Dhamma Hall. But we're not looking at, at the, the, the quality of the forms in space, but space itself. What do you do when you're observing space? You're not paying attention, you're not giving, you're not absorbing into the structure, into the Dhamma hall, or the shrine room in the big house, or the nun's shrine room. You're not, this isn't, this is irrelevant, you know, the, in terms of re reflecting on space. Because space is, is like this, and space is infinite, it doesn't have, it's immeasurable. Consciousness is, is immeasurable. But you might think of consciousness as my consciousness, as my brain, in me, this body. <clears throat> and that's, then I'm, then I'm <clears throat> attached to the extraordinariness of the specialness of, you know, me as a separate person, me as a separate body, me as, a, as Ajahn Sameto. And my particular memories and my views, what I think and what I feel, and, and that is, that makes me special. So each one of us as a person is special. Or when we want to be special, then it's sakya ditti, isn't it? I want to, I'm a special person. And that might be true. Some, some people are special, more special than others. <laughs> but that's a qualitative thing, isn't it? That's not, that's not, that's not something to try to attain, to be more special than somebody else. Is that is feeding the, the disease. So getting out of specialness into ordinariness is where? Space and consciousness. Is they there's nothing special about them. And then personally you might think, oh, I don't want to be that. I don't I want to be special. You know, I want to have a I want to attain arahant. I want to be the first one at Chitters to become an arahant. I want to become a first American arahant. Before I die, I want, I want to have it in my record that Ajahn Sumedho is the first American and British, because I'm also British, arahant, Western arahant. And I, you know, I want that recorded in history, so I'll be special. 
And when I die, then I'll have a special place in the history of Buddhism. And, you know, that's, that's going to make me feel very nice, you know. I haven't wasted my life. My life has been special. I've been with special teachers, special experiences. Special, special, special. So that, that's the recipe for disaster, isn't it? That is not, that leads to suffering. Being an attachment to, to condition, phenomena, in other words, always has condition phenomena as, you know, is changing and it has different qualities, peak moments, and so it arises and it reaches a peak and then it, and then it uh, ceases. There's a, so peak moments, you know, you, if you attach to peak moments in your life, then, then you're going to experience a lot of suffering because they're unsustainable. Peak moments, just like your inhalation, is, it goes up. You can't keep it there at that point of in, at the peak of inhalation. It, it rises up. And, and then you can sustain it, for, hold your breath for a little while, <laughs> then you have to let it go. And that's the pattern, you know, so peak moments are just like that, you know, you can't, if you depend on inspiration, feeling inspired, then you do, you go out and you feel inspired, but you can't sustain it. That's where if your monastic life is based on being continuously inspired, then you can't sustain it because it go down. Pretty soon you, you're not inspired. You don't like it. You, it's uh, disappointing. People disrobe. People that inspire you leave. And you're dependent on them. You know, their inspiration keeps you inspired. And when they lose their inspiration, then you lose your inspiration. What is that? And you just Sakyatiti Sila Patabaramasa Vichikicha plus. So is this this you know, this is what you want to live your life doing, or liberate yourself, put the key into the door, turn it to the right, open the door, get out. Simple. So this is for reflection, you know, to, to, uh, you know, to observe this in yourself. After these three fetters, then, you know, after you see through these three fetters, you know, so there, these three fetters are teaching you, don't see them as things you've got to get rid of, you know. They're ajans, they're teachers. And what does uh, Sakyaditi have to teach me? It teaches me what Sakyaditi is. And this I need to know because Sakyaditi has been a source of a lot of misery in my life. Being a person, a personality, being Ajahn Samedo or being Robert Jackman or whatever, you know, is being a man, being a male, being American, being a white man, a big man with big feet, getting old, being 71. Having uh, delicate Celtic complexion, it gets cancerous. Things like this, uh, all these identities. This, this uh, you know, this the sense of what I look like my appearance, my past, this is, this is, this is uh, suffering, attachment to this. And my life's been very good one, you know, I mean, it's, you know, 
on a level of experience and so forth, have a very good life. I'm not complaining. But even at its best, you know, there's an enormous amount of suffering in it. Of just self-consciousness, worry, anxiety, resentment, dread. And so this is, this is, you know, by seeing through these, through these three fetters, then you, you have the jnana knowledge, direct knowledge of the path. Then it, from there, then the, uh, Vyapada and Raka, these are kind of, these are like uh, de sexual desire and aversion. Because these are primal kind of energies. that we personalize, you know, if we, if we don't see through Sila Bhatta Bharamasa or Sakya Ditya Vichikisha, then we, we, even these primal energies are uh, taken personally and evaluated and uh, judged, analyzed. My sexual drive, my sexuality, my anger, And then we, we go into analyzing, you know, about our sexuality and our angry feelings of anger and resentment. That's Sakyatiti, Sila Bhattabharamasa Vichikicha. But when those delusions are, are no longer hold us, we still, are still uh, you know, recognizing these, these uh, primal forces of the, the body this realm, the sense realm. But you see, they're different now. It's not, it's not interpreted in terms of, of self anymore, or good or bad, but recognized, it's like in the form, monastic form, especially where the, it's a celibate uh, convention. You have very good perspective on the, on the sexual energies of, the, of your own body. Your relationship to them is recognizing these, not and not 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 getting neurotic and and judging them on the sakyaditi level anymore, but being freeing yourself from from the the power and the the uh, that these have over consciousness. So this awareness of sexual energy, awareness of aversion. That is your refuge. And then that, that allows you to liberate yourself from those, not, not you don't get rid of them, you know, you're not trying to suppress or deny them, but you, you no longer uh, get lost in them. You see the, 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 the suffering of, of uh, just following these energies of the body. And then the, the uh, anagami with the, the sort of attachment to, to uh, refinements, tranquility, peacefulness, harmony. You know, sometimes you just want to stay in this state of bliss. And you don't want to have to, you know, go to the WAM meeting. Because it's just this state of, this state of just emptiness, so pleasant. So letting go of even that, the, the, uh, the, refined conscious moments towards then the, the last three fetters of uh, Utacha, Mana, and Avicha, as Arahant. So the, 
is the restlessness, the mana, still the innate sense of I am, still the, and the avicca, the, the uh, sense of, uh, you know, the, any illusion, any kind of uh, lingering avicca is vanished, disappears through this awareness. So trusting in this awareness, this, uh, this is the path, this is the way, this is the, the liberation, is here and now. So these fetters, you know, those the ten fetters are, are kind of guidelines or criteria to reflect on. They help to to look at the kind of things that you might, you know, you wouldn't probably see so clearly if it wasn't so so clearly uh, spelled out in this form. So, you know, you've got the Four Noble Truths, this is the, the Satipatthana, Paticca Samuppana, these, these uh, teachings, they're all for reflecting on the present moment. They're not a kind of things to grasp and worship by hanging them on the wall. But, it, you know, that's all right. You know, but it's better than getting, you know, hanging them on the wall makes you feel better. But I think use them, you know, for, that's what they're meant. They're, they're functional. These things are to be used for liberation. And then trusting in this awareness, you know, this is this is it. And then the Wichikicha, are you sure? You know, maybe maybe you got it wrong. Maybe you should get the jhanas first. <laughs> <laughs> so then, then you know you know this so well the Sakya Ditti and Wichikicha how they work together. So I mean it, it you know, I just don't believe it. I don't believe anything I think or my memories. You know, criticisms and I feel hurt or I feel, you know, people uh criticize me or blame me even for things I've never done. I used to get very upset when people blame me for things I've never done. I think that's not fair. But now, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm not going to make a lot of a ruckus around that. You know, people blame me for anything they want. Break my heart, disappoint me, whatever. This is, you know, on a personal level. But my refuge is not in that, you see. So I don't know if everybody disrobed. If you all got up and left right now and said, what a bunch of rubbish. You know, personally I feel very disappointed. But I know better than to trust in that or wallow and follow that. Because I know this awareness is, 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 is strong and stable. And it's not, it, it, you know, and, and it's not dependent on conditions, uh, uh, you know, pleasant conditions supporting it. It's the agupa jado vimuti. It's the unshakable deliverance of the heart. This is it. This is the way. And this confidence comes from, from, you know, putting it to the test. When people disrobe, people you really love and like leave. Personally, I feel very disappointed or sad. Or, but it does not, I don't, you know, that's not... I don't wallow in that feeling. 
I don't grasp it and, and just get caught in my disappointment. Because I know that this, this awareness is my refuge. and It's not dependent on people uh, affirming monasticism, Theravada Buddhism, Chitters, Amravati or whatever. So then this is to be realized individually. Bajitang Vetidapo we knew here.